we've got a very important day today. It was the start of the test match. Andy Murray was playing. We've had a budget and a tube strike. But the most important thing today is the launch of the Heat Network's Code of Practice. This is not a guide. This actually is a set of minimum standards and that is quite a different approach for the sector and for SIBSI. At the first steering committee meeting I, I was very aware that, that there was all this expertise around the room and there was huge amounts of knowledge in everyone's head and um, my task was to try and extract that and, and make it into explicit knowledge. An important piece of the jigsaw, this work on the actual technical standards, on making sure the heat networks work, making sure that they deliver. You know, we are genuinely convinced that heat networks are going to be a substantial and significant part of the solution to how we decarbonise heating. And I think it uh, will help to take the sector to the next level, but it will not take the sector to the next level if you just produce a dry and dusty publication. So what we've done is actually underpin this with a scheme of training, accreditation and registration of heat network consultants, people who have been trained on the code of practice. In 2050, Pimlico District Heating uh, Undertaking is going to be 100 years old and it's the time when our carbon budgets culminate. What I hope is that we'll see the kind of the children and the grandchildren of PDHU kind of dotted all around here and hopefully all linked up together delivering the kind of user-orientated, low-carbon, cost-effective heat. Did you all have a good site visit to see Pimlico District Heating uh, Unit? Who went to the site visit? You know that we were built in 1950. It was the UK's first district heating scheme. And it was all down to Sydney Donkin, and he'd had a lifetime in power generation. So he thought, why, why build boiler houses when you've got Battersea Power Station just across the river? Today, we supply 3,300 homes, three schools, 50 commercial premises, 51 gigawatt hours of heat a year. The technology, of course, is very straightforward. Two 69 litre V16 engines generating 3.2 megawatts of electricity and, and round about four megawatts of heat and we simply strip all the heat, the cooling water going around the cylinder jackets, we strip the heat out of the oil heat exchanger, we strip the heat out of the first stage intercooler, and of course out of the exhaust. And that heat can be the majority heat to our heat network. We've seen some really great heat networks uh, that are performing very well, but unfortunately, anecdotal evidence is showing that some heat networks are not performing as they should at the moment, particularly at the smaller end. And that is the role of the, the Code of Practice. It's designed to ensure that heat networks are conceived, built and operated in a way that means that they work for consumers, that they give them the low cost, low carbon, affordable heat that they need. The systems themselves are a, a key part to how in the future we're going to be able to deliver low carbon and solutions and low carbon economy for future generations. So it's important that we get this right now. It's important that we get the messages out on how to do these, these things properly. Follow the heat network code of practice and we can actually get it overcome those problems. Heat networks are actually a great way of supplying heat in energy dense areas like cities.